Since the army took possession in 1940, the land of Alston Lodge, Ham Street, Ashford, Kent, formerly the luxurious home of the Olivers and the Bernardo families, has been growing nothing but young silver birch and rabbits. By 1949, the once stately park of 34 acres was covered with silver birch and a few broom seedlings as densely as a wheat field is covered by straw. Some of the seedlings ran up a height of 15 feet or more, crowding out ornamental shrubs and having diameters of up to six inches. So it might have continued, but for the fact that Nigel Bullock, aged 20, and his brother Alan, 18, declined their father's offer to take them into his engineering business. They wanted to be farmers, and like all young farmers, they were faced with the impossibility of getting any land except at preposterous prices. Right, said their father, Mr. S. E. Bullock, a yachtsman and man of action, who has pioneered business in many parts of the world. You can start farming from the ground up. There are 34 acres of derelict parkland and a Ferguson tractor. Clear it, and you can farm it. It looked such a wilderness, said Alan, that we got a contractor with a bulldozer to come and have a look at it. But the price and terms of the contract were such that father wouldn't sign. He didn't want to pay for the land twice. It was engineering experience that led Mr. Bullock to believe that the light Ferguson tractor could deal with this wilderness. He chose the Ferguson system because he knew that first-class material, good design and honest workmanship was a stronger combination than brute force and massive weight. He knew also that mounted implements, automatic depth control and the hydraulic overload release feature would give the greatest maneuverability yet achieved in tractors. This gives almost complete freedom from breakages. Progress proved the soundness of his judgment. Ivan Beaumont, 34-year-old farm manager, mounted the Ferguson with a 16-inch digger plow and with no further preliminaries opened up one side of the thicket. The saplings were pushed down as the tractor passed over them. The plow brought them out so cleanly that only a few, perhaps one in a hundred, needed a few strokes with the matlock to free them entirely. They were then collected for burning. The farm is on the edge of Romney Marsh. Although the soil will work into a good seedbed, most farmers would call it heavy clay. Certainly it's three horse land for ploughing over six inches deep. The first of the cleared land has gone into linseed. This gives time for working and some safety from the rabbits. Anyone passing quickly while ploughing is in progress would think they had caught madmen at play. The little Ferguson alongside the thicket seems to be facing impossible odds. Following the plough comes the Ferguson tiller. Just as the overload release in the tractor's hydraulic system obviates the dangers of breakage during ploughing, so does the spring loading of the rigid tiller tines permit cultivation through the roots without damage. The tines will ride over any obstruction and immediately spring into action after the danger is passed. Two or three cultivations with the tiller after the timber has been collected produces a tilt satisfactory for any crop. For the land hungry, there is a very useful lesson to be learned in reclamation at Alston Lodge. And it will not be long before the Bullocks have the farmland on which they have set their hearts. Mm -hmm. 